Well, welcome. This is take two, even though you didn't know. I didn't realize I didn't press record. So, and I did a wonderful prayer. So I hope this one comes out just as good or even better. But welcome again to part two of Let's Worship. Um, Last week, I shared it from the book, A Simple Truth. And this week, I'll share from the book, Alternative New Approaches to Traditional Christian Beliefs by William Fisher. And we'll further explore the meaning of worshiping and prayer. And I join them together because I feel that they're conjoined in a beautiful way. This week, I was looking for things to share about um, good, what's going on good in our world. It was very interesting on the internet because I couldn't really find anything that good that stood out in the news. But anyway, this week we're going to honor the queen who passed on September 8th. I didn't mention it last week and I spoke of September 11th. But let's hold that in the royal family in our thoughts and prayers for tomorrow is a bank holiday to observe the day, to the celebrate or mourn or just reflect or all of the above on her life and what she has done for the world and for England or for any of us. But let's let it be a pace of blessing. And I also want to tell you that next week uh, there won't be a service because I will be um, doing the ministering the blessing memorial, sorry, blessing burial service in New York for my brother-in-law. I was honored to be asked to do this blessing. And so we're taking a road trip um, to get there up into upstate New York. So hold me in prayer and all of um, Joe's family and us, my husband's family and us in um, prayer as we do this blessing and join together and honor Robert's life. So before we go into prayer, we're going to, I'm going to share with you again, Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Let's take a deep breath in as we open our hearts to the presence of a God that is within each and every one of us. And let the love that is within within us spread out into the world to heal those in need of healing, to heal ourselves, to heal our world as we hold it in prayer, releasing all violence and wars and angst and rise up in faith and love and harmony. So I bless those in Russia and Ukraine where the war still persists and we know as we affirm it is done, we know that it is ending right now. We hold that truth and allow God into that prayer and in divine order it will be done. And we give thanks for those blessings. We send healing blessings out into the world where violence continues to take place. We've had more murders in Bermuda than I've ever known and bless the families and um, all that takes place in the road accidents and um, people driving and not paying attention in our island where someone knocked down an electrical pole and clogged the roads and bless us all to pay attention and to honor each and every person and to look out for one another so that we When we are driving, we're not on our phones or not paying attention. And when we're with family, we love and honor them. When we're praying, we conjoin and collectively hold the high watch. And we give thanks for all the blessings that that are ours to receive. Bless those in hospitals and homes and those of our families and friends who are sick, we bless them and raise them up in good health, knowing that God is in the midst of it all. We continue to bless doctors and nurses, and we know COVID is finally dissipating, but there are still many of us suffering from that and many other diseases and health issues in our world. So bless us all as we live our lives, knowing that life The one constant is change, but with it, 
we have God that guides us through every step of the way. So we thank you, God, for your blessings each and every day, for we know with God all things are possible. And as we pray, we lay down any burdens that are heavy in our hearts and be, let us be filled with the Holy Spirit that heals and blesses us right now. And as we feel that energy, we are born anew and we give thanks and rejoice and worship and pray. With our hearts filled, we affirm words of faith and joy as we act in faith. And may our thoughts and our words be grounded in faith. And as we rise up, renewed and born in spirit, we are filled with greater strength, love and wisdom. And we give thanks again as we say amen. Amen. Ah. We continue with our daily word. And the word for today is thoughtful. I love that word because as I talked about in prayer, thoughtfulness is connecting with one another. It means we care because we think of not just ourselves, but how we're connecting with each person that we touch in our lives. So let's affirm first together, my kind thoughts and deeds are a blessing. Can we say that together? My kind thoughts and deeds are a blessing. Today I bring the love and peace of God to all of my encounters by being thoughtful. More than politeness and deeper than kindness. Thoughtfulness means I consider the comfort and happiness of others equal to my own. My intention is to let those in my life know what they mean to me. I may reach out to someone who needs an encouraging word, letting them know that they have what it takes to succeed. I may surprise someone with a kind act, anticipating a need and taking care of something for them before they have to ask. Each thoughtful word and act lets those in my life know how important they are to me and how worthy they are of my time and action, sorry, and attention. And it closes with Hebrews 13 verse 16. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. How true such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Today's song is God is good and all is well. And I know there are a few I get dinged on YouTube and um, Facebook. I hope this is not one of them because I really love this song. God is good and all is well. Sorry, I turned off the radio, the tape instead of turning it on. Here we go.
is well and all is good. I love that. So as I said, I hope it comes through. I am, um, of course, I am copyright free because I've gotten it off the right side and paid. Um, but sometimes, as I've noticed, and I'm sure you've noticed, the song hasn't come through. But I pray this is one that it doesn't. So God is good and all is well. So we are worshiping. What does worship mean? was one of the questions I asked week, last week. What does it mean to you? And this week, as I said, we're using the book Alternatives. And it talks about the different ways of worship, whether good or bad, indifferent or whatever way it comes forth and why people do it and why people don't do it. It, it is part of, it's just life. And just each person is an individual and chooses how they experience God. So what does the revealing word say worship means? It says worship is when one worships, he bestows his love on or identifies himself with the things of spirit. When we worship, we're connecting with spirit. Worship represents the effort of man to sustain a right mental attitude to go toward God. And I said last week, it means remember the commandments. We talked about right attitude. And then I talked about prayer and why I think it's connected. It's because prayer is a communion between man and God. It's that internal one community um, connection, in it, but it's also that outer connection of prayer when we pray for others and around others and for healing and for good in life and all of those things. So it's all a part of, to me, of worship. So let's worship today so what a what is what is worship most prominent thing in the christian world they say is a worship service and people sometimes worship when they have no association whatever with a church but they attend the service why you wonder because for many of us we grew up in a world where sunday was set aside as a sabbath day a day for resting and you didn't have to go to work and so you went to a church just to go to a church our world has changed a lot because almost everything's open on a sunday but whether they're open or not you can still attend a service at any point you know sometimes and many of us we go to church remember we're talking about alternatives as a sense of obligation Hmm. We didn't actually feel we were in the mood for a service, but we went anyway. And a lot of times when you go in that frame of mind, you don't really get that spiritual uplift that you're looking for. But sometimes you just might. It might be just the thing you needed, even though it was an obligation and you went. And some part of it brought out a spark in you. But for others, they can walk away and it does nothing for them. They went out and worship. Then there are people who worship as a sense of responsibility to do others. <laughs> that smile. Sometimes those are the people you see sleeping in the back row of the church because they went because the mama or the dad or somebody told them they had to go to church. <laughs> it reminds me, my grandma was always trying to get her sons to go to church and they never went except maybe Easter or something like that. But a sense of obligation. And it was so funny because we can hear my grandpa snoring. And he means they hit him. It was funny. But they went and their presence was welcome because that's what they wanted. Um, does it set a good example for those who have to send to church? You know, it's a family thing and it's how you connect and, and you do it because you love your grandmother or the family member. And you most likely didn't get much out of the service or you might not have. Um, for some people, it could have been the impetus to start going to a service, but it will be for them to find out if they get a spiritual experience, but they went. Then there are also those who go on the service and we say it's under duress. They're persuaded. Well, similar to my, my uncles or um, family members. But it wasn't under duress, really, because they went because they love my grandma or whoever they went for. 
You know, sometimes this one is when you have friends who go to church and they keep saying, come to my service, come to my service. And just to, for your friend's sake, you go. And you could say it's an obligation, but it is, you really don't want to go. And it feels like it's under, you're persuaded and it's not very gentle persuasion. It's every time you saw them, they say, you coming to my church? But they go, and it's sad. They go to a place of worship that is a place where you're supposed to connect with God. But they're unlikely to get anything from it because they're sitting there the whole time like, I don't want to be here. You pray that they get something, but most times not. And then there are those who simply go to service, Sunday service, so they can be with other people. Remember, worshiping and services are many times are social communities. And many lonely people in the world will go to a church service because they know that's always there. And and we found during COVID, a lot of people, because they couldn't attend church, were very lonely and at home on their own. And that was sometimes for especially elder people, the only time they got out and got around other people. And um, because it was social for them. And then many churches have all sorts of activities and things that go on there and it's beneficial for their health and their mind and the connection and their spiritual upliftment. So so there is a lot of different ways in which we worship in the traditional sense um, of going to a church service. Then there are others who go to church and we quote unquote call it selfish reason reasons. They're attending for pol- political office. You'll find people in some places who go to church because they want people to vote for them. I don't like that, but that's my opinion of it. But they went there and, and those who believe in it are honored and love it that they came out to church. You know, we're all different. We all accept things and honor things as we see fit. But they came out to service. Whether they listen or not is not the point. They are there to commune with you. And then they're there socially and they talk with people afterwards and you pray they keep it not too political. But there are other ways. There are many people. Mr. Fisher, who wrote this book, says he, he remembers a physician who built his medical practice by going to church. Yeah, he could have been new in the neighborhood. I don't know. And and you know, there are many people who go to church. They go for healing. And he was there and got him his patience and stuff. And we can look at it as good as bad, but they attended a worship service. Then there's other people go to be seen just um, for the good of their community image, not just political, but community image. They could be um, running for mayor um, or any other type of thing and they want everybody to know who they are. Um, Business leaders go to church services. The spiritual benefits can hardly be achieved, but sometimes there are those who go to church and see them there and think it's good for their neighborhood, for their society, and we thank God. They came out, they connected. Then there are those who go to church just to get away from home. Remember, we're talking about alternatives, different ways of worshiping and different reasons for people to go to worship. And remember the question I asked last week and this week, why do you worship? What gets you to go to a Sunday service? What is it about it? And these are just different reasons why. And some people, um, is an hour, simply an hour to get away from screaming children or a nagging spouse, (laughs) sad, but there are reasons for people. And they go there to have a good spiritual experience in the church and to find peace and harmony that they're seeking in the midst of all the chaos in their home. And they escape something and we pray the benefits of that hours, one hour Sunday retreat would help them. It's limited because their focus for going there is a little screwed, but the people there can embrace them and love them and they can get what they're not getting somewhere else. And then there are others who don't go to church at all. And through COVID, we found a lot more of that because you couldn't go to church services. And now in today's world, like us, we've closed our center in Bermuda. We have this podcast and we connect with people and I see more and more people listen to it. So now people have alternatives. They can go to service every Sunday or they can go to service on a Sunday and 
some Sundays and stay at home. And, you know, and it's not during COVID. It's bad weather sometimes or you're not feeling too good. So having the TV services and the podcasts and all of these things that are available all the time, it brings people into a um, connection where they're not necessarily with people all the time, but they get to worship. And before it used to be just the radios or just on TV. Um, now you just go on the internet and there's so many ways where you can get a spiritual um, program to listen to from any part of the world. You can get prayers and meditations and you can see um different parts of services and feel the presence of God. There are many people who love podcasts and things and they really get what they need and because they can go out socially at any other time and um, connect with people. But for some people, they just like to do it in silence and in their home and in the quiet. And you remember the dictionary um, says that worship is to feel extreme adoration or devotion. It's that feeling that we're looking for. And and in today's world and stuff where people don't go to church all the time, well, more is not about going to a building. It's without walls. We're going because we want that feeling, that devotion, that connection that's deep in our hearts because the presence of God is within us. And it's just finding a way to bring it out and feel the energy of it. And that feeling it is what is important about worship. In a true worship experience, the feeling is truly the essence and becomes a part of who you are and it brings, builds your true nature as we talk about and is reflected out in your life and your quality of who you are and the character that you present to the world and it shines through you, that feeling. So so in addition to going to a worship service, if you can, you get it in so many different ways. But true worship, remember what we talked about last week with the book, The Simple Truth, is worshiping on a daily basis. It's like prayer. Every thought is a prayer. Worship can occur at any time in any place and you can get and feel that adoration and devotion to God. It's not just experience in a church, as I said. It can be anywhere. I talked about many times about my porch where I created that serene space and I have um, plants and beautiful little sayings up and um, and every time I step out there, I feel the peace that path is all understanding. And I've created my worship space where it's quiet and I feel the presence of God. And that's why I say worship and prayer are interconnected in a beautiful way. Because this place that we feel, and like we said many times, um, podcasts of these are worshiping beyond the walls. You find that special altar within you and all you create outside of you where you get and find and share your adoration and feel the energy of God. Nature is also another place, sitting by the ocean, where you get that inspiration or sometimes just lying on the ground looking at the clouds and you see the different shapes and the forms and it's, and it's God at work. And it reminds us of all the attributes of God. And God is in everything around us in the midst of all things. Looking at mountains, the oceans, calm waters, rough seas. All of these things we see and feel the energy of God. Going for walks. We can do walking meditations. There are endless places and times of worship. Everywhere and any time is a time for prayer and worship. The important thing is to remember there are always alternatives. 
Worship doesn't have to be limited to attending church. Yes, we love you to come to a church service. We love to meet you and hug you and share with you and ask how you're doing in person. But remember, it's not just that. It's every moment, every breath, every day, and any place. So let your spirit soar all the time. Not just weekly, like listening to me at any time. So constantly opening yourselves up to worshiping and prayer shows that you're practicing the presence of God. Practicing the presence of God. It's 24-7. It's breathing in and out and knowing God and being thankful. It shifts your quality of life and opens it up your true worship experience. You become more effervescent and magnetized and people are drawn to you because of the energy that you exude. And your mind is also filled with new and exciting ideas because you're being guided by God all the time and energized by his spirit. So open your heart to worshiping in prayer and live in peace and harmony. And exercise your alternative to worship constantly. Remember, prayer is a communion between God and man. And worship is when we have that adoration and devotion where we identify with the Spirit. So I'm going to close before we go into our meditation with Psalm 133. How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. So let's dwell together in unity, in prayer, and in worshiping, and now in meditation. So take a deep breath in and out. And center yourselves in the blessings and in the presence of God. Breathe. Close your eyes and relax for a moment and breathe deeply. Find joy and beauty in the presence of God within you right now. Appreciate this day and give thanks. Feel the glow of God's love that is a wonderful gift that brings beauty into the world and into your soul. Breathe. Give thanks as you worship and pray. For with God, all things are possible. Trust, have faith, pray. Take a deep breath in and out. And as you open your eyes, give thanks for this moment and this time. For you are one with God. In our closing affirmation today, we say, I joyously worship God by acknowledging him him as the only power. Let's say that together. I joyously worship God by acknowledging him as the only power. So worship and pray knowing that truth. And let's close with our prayer 
The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. And we are richly blessed right now. Amen. And so it is. So until next time, remember I'm not here next week. Until next time, have a wonderful, wonderful life. Blessings to all.